Hey guys, Amy and Loey here giving you your playful experiment for the week. If you don't already know, this is an experiment that you do with your partner and your partner is assigned to you and you can find out who your partner is on a list inside of our group. No one can tell us and you guys meet up in some sort of way, video call or something and do your playful experiment for the week. And this week we're going to do worst case scenario or what's the worst that could happen um, it's sort of inspired by this cute game that I saw in the show, This Is Us. Um, Beth and Randall play this game with each other as this like cute couple thing that they do where it's like, all right, you know, five minutes, go for it. What's the worst that can happen? And just sort of vent what's the worst that could happen. Um, anyway, so we've got our own twist on it, but it is inspired by that. Uh, so what you're going to do with your partner is think of a time when you have been afraid or hesitant, you know? So even if it's not something that's like, okay, it's obviously a fear. It's just like, I've had a hesitation. I've felt a little stuck. Um, those are the biggest indicators that there's a hot spot there and that like something needs to be let out and aired out and put out into the open. So think of a situation that feels like stuck um, and we're going to play worse, those the worst that could happen. And we're going to get crazy and silly with it on purpose because that's the sweetness in it. Um, is to like let yourself free, uh, and release those restraints that we usually put on ourselves to like not be ridiculous and not go over the top. And we don't let ourselves be as like grumpy and afraid and, you know, have our imaginations run wild as we want, but we're going to let ourselves do that. Um, so you take turns. I mean, obviously, you know, one person's going to share their scenario, then the other person's going to do theirs. And, um, you're going to say like all the worst things that can happen, you know, like, and then my toe could fall off and, you know, I really need it for running or I'm just so vain. I would never be able to wear flip flops again or, you know, just whatever the crazy, um, outlandish over the top stuff is and the purpose of this is I mean if it's not already obvious because it's fun um, but there's so many other juicy purposes to this I mean number one you're off venting a lot of the fear you're just like releasing the steam valve because those things are implanted in the back of your mind anyway even if you are putting on the brakes and making sure you don't go ridiculous and you're just you know keeping yourself level headed they're in there and so it lets off some steam. But the other thing that it does is sort of like calls the fears out and like names them. Like once you do that, maybe you see like, oh, I mean, it seems like a big deal that my toe is going to fall off. But now I just said it. And that's like, is that really? I mean, you know, you can kind of see some of that. Um, but then again, oh, my God, maybe the fear is horrible and maybe it is really legit. Like, oh, my gosh, that would be horrible if our house actually burned down. Um, but even if they aren't fears that are like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought, even if they are as bad as you thought, when you are able to just like call them out and say, all right, I see you, fear. I hear you, fear. I hear that crazy outlandish concern um, or totally legitimate concern. I see it. I hear it. You've had your space to talk and to be seen and heard, and now it's time for you to go. You know, you're not gonna stick me up and freeze me in this place where I can't even move forward and like keep me in this hesitant, sort of I can't decide stuck place, it's time to go. Uh, and it's just like this calling it out and you know, naming it thing that lets it go. The other thing that I've heard people say though, or I know this because I know that this is like kind of behind why we don't go around acting like saying our fears all the time is because like we're kind of afraid or there is a fear of fear. You know, there is a fear that like if you 
sit and talk about your fears, then you're going to kind of like stew in them and just like marinate in this giant fear bubble that's going to like make everything worse and the fear is going to just get bigger and bigger and bigger until you just like bring it to yourself and make it happen, you know? Um, no, that's not the point of what we're doing. I mean, I get that concern because I guess it is possible for you to just stew in your own fear until it just gets huge and overtakes you. But that is totally not what we're doing here. The purpose is to call it, say what it is in order to release it. Because if you think about the very act of releasing something, you have to have it in your hand before you can toss it, you know? So this is just us getting it in our hand so that we can toss it. Uh, because if we don't have it in our hand, if it's just over there, how can we toss it? You know? Um, so this isn't us doing, this is us grabbing it to release it. And it is a super sweet thing to do with a person, another individual, because it's like bonding and connecting and vulnerable. That's why it's so sweet when Randall and Beth do it. Um, and it's cool because you can do it with someone that you don't even know well. And it is a brave, beautiful act of vulnerability to say your fears and let another person witness them. What a gift, because then they get to know like, oh my God, listen to the fears in another person. Mine are so valid. Mine are so allowed, you know? It's like, I'm allowed to have fears too. They have them, we relate, like we're humans. Let's just freaking be humans. Uh, it gives us permission to be humans. And it also like, that person kind of holds you down and grounds you. I mean, they're listening to your fears and they're, part of what helps you release it because they're sitting there like I see and hear your fear too like yep oh my god like volcanoes could erupt and your house could be melted by lava uh you know whoa yeah and and they're hearing this and witnessing it with you and helping you release it like they're tossing too they're using their energy to like toss it too because we're doing this together and you know so it's extra projectile sort of energy behind that toss um, because yeah that person is there with you they're hearing you they're listening you're being yourself you're opening up you're showing that fears are just a normal human part of life and then it's like yeah it's something that we are now like ditching you know it's it's gone now I heard you and boof it's gone um, the other thing this does is that it helps you to even make decisions, you know, see all the different pieces of the puzzle. When you start spouting off your fears, you start seeing the different um, possible ways that this could play out. And it sort of helps you like, oh, okay, it helps me see the possibilities and maybe give me a better, a better picture, a bigger picture of like what needs to, what parts are at play and what needs to happen. Loie, do you have a worst case scenario, a time that you like paused or were stuck and yeah? Yeah. Can we do it? I was at the pool mm -hmm. and there were some interesting teens that I wanted to hang out with. And I wanted to go over to them, but I did not go over to them. I hesitated and I was stuck. And the worst case scenario is uh, I could have went over and they could have like ignored me or said nothing to me, or they could have like scoffed at me like, no, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> or they could have actually told me, yeah, we don't want to hang out. We don't go away. <laughs> we don't want to talk to you. Um, Right? And like, but what, even worse, even worse, like, even yeah. Worse, um, or like, why would that have been so bad? Like if they were like, <laughs> I don't want to hang out. Like, why would that have been so bad? I would have felt like lame or stupid. Like I was clearly not cool enough or I wasn't interesting enough to them, even though I thought they were interesting. It was like, I'm not interesting. To them. Okay. Yeah. And you would have felt lame. And then if you did feel lame or stupid, like then what happens then? Uh, that's a hard one. And you like die of fright die on the of side fright. of the pool. Yeah, you know? like, like a panic attack and like fall into the pool. like. <laughs> or like everybody else sees too. And then or, like yeah. the entire world is like taking photos and <laughs> posting you on social media like as the lamest person the, in the lamest universe. entire, yeah, exactly. Let's in the entire a, universe. Make a meme about this is the for, format for a lame person. And for yeah. like the rest of your life. Everyone recognizes your face as the lame face. And oh, that's the lame 
can put like even yeah. when your children are younger it's like the title that you yeah. now assume <laughs> and everyone calls you by it and... yeah my kids are gonna be like look it's lame mommy yeah <laughs> it's, okay see what i'm saying yeah. like stretch it like what is so bad if they thought you were lame what is so bad right. if they said nah uh-uh go away idiot like you know then what right. like yeah. really what would if, would you have died would you have fallen in the <laughs> pool would you have like never been useful to anyone you know like, anyway so that's what i'm saying play it out and see where it goes again not to soak into the worst stuff we're like calling it in you know, this little container that we're creating together to toss it, to toss it, to like, you know what? Cool. And, you know, everybody has had that experience where they were like, oh my God, and then I'll be like labeled the lame for the rest of my life, right? And then when we like hear that out loud, like, oh yeah, I guess that happens to like everyone all the time, every day. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, or, and like people never get titled lame on the top, you know, like it, it doesn't yeah. happen. You could always find like a corner of the world where someone didn't see that video, <laughs> you know? Uh, anyway. All right. So you guys have fun sharing your worst case scenarios and being close with each other like that.